Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about dynamic balance. So system of rotating masses is in dynamic balance whenever there is no resultant force and no resultant couple on the body. That means summation of forces is equal to zero and summation of couples is also equal to zero. So whenever there are masses there may be n number of masses and when they are in different planes along with producing the centrifugal forces they also produce the unbalanced couples so here we have taken a small example let's say there is a mass m1 and there is a mass m2 so what is happening these masses they are producing radially outward and if they are uh, connected by a shaft which is rotating at some angular velocity omega so what is happening these masses they are producing some centrifugal force acting radially outwards so we say that summation of forces is equal to zero if m1 and the radial distance at whatever this body is placed or this mass is placed so if m1 r1 omega square because omega is same so we usually omit while saying the equation so we say if m1 r1 is equal to minus of m2 r2 or if we say m1 r1 plus m2 r2 is equal to zero in that case first equation is satisfied that means forces are balanced now what is happening because these masses are at a distance some l distance from each other so their moments should also be equal to zero that means m1 r1 l it should be equal to m2 r2 into l so if this does not happen what we do we usually add counter masses to the system now see there are two ways of balancing a system either by redistribution of masses or by adding the counter masses now when the machine is already designed it is in operation and after that we are facing some issues with the unbalanced forces it is not possible to redistribute the masses so what we do we place some counter masses we place counter masses in such a way that the resultant force is produced because of these two counter masses it balances the force and the couple produced because of these two masses also balance the resultant couple and ensure that there is no resultant force and resultant couple in the system now here i have added two masses this can also be done with the help of one mass so either one or two counter masses are being added in a system to make it dynamically balanced so we'll see how we can transfer a force from one plane to another plane so we have taken two planes plane one and plane two and we say that there is a point mass m at some radial distance r along from the axis of rotation on plane one now see if you talk about a rotor or any rotating body we can say that it consists of n number of rotating discs right there are n number of rotating discs and we can consider each disc to be a different plane so if you want to transfer forces how it can be done it can be done by the addition of counter masses how suppose there is another plane 2 in which we want to transfer this force mr omega square because omega is constant for the whole system common so therefore we are not using the term omega again and again so what we do we place two forces f1 and f2 in the opposite directions in plane 2 such that mr omega square is equal to f1 and this is equal to f2 now see f1 and f2 because they are equal and opposite they are balancing each other and this f2 is also balancing the mass in plane 1 that is mr so what we are left with we are left with one force which is f1 the magnitude same as the original force mr and see it is transferred to a new plane that is plane 2 but in the process of addition of these counter masses what happens we create a couple which is because of mr and uh, this force F2 and its value will be MRL. Now because the moment of couple it will be same in the whole plane we can take any point for reference so let's say we take point O as reference then OA it denotes the direction of the axis of rotation of the body or the system. So if you use the right hand screw rule you can find the sense or the direction of this couple and this couple is actually perpendicular to the axis of rotation 
but while doing the palimpsest problems what we do we rotate this couple vector 90 degree in such a way that the force vector and the couple vectors they are parallel to each other so while doing the graphical solution for problems it actually reduces the work and it reduces the time otherwise we'll have to draw two different lines at two different angles so rather than that that if you draw let's say a force triangle and if you know the direction or the angular position of the uh, you know force because of that body so if let's say if this is mr in the same direction something you can find which is mrl so you just have to draw a parallel line to mr so it actually eases out the work while doing the graphical solution or the graphical method of balancing now it is said that whatever is the number of unbalanced forces in a system in whatever number of planes they are there they can always be balanced by using two counter masses right we will see how let's assume that there are three forces in a system f1 f2 and f3 and they are all on the axis of rotation of the rotor or the shaft and we take let's say two planes plane 1 and plane 2 now what we have done we are distributing each of the force in both these planes so this f1 have broken have like actually distributed this force f1 in planes 1 and 2 so let's say a small component goes to plane 1 which is f1a and the remaining goes to plane 2 which is f1b now the direction of the force the sense it remains the same the angular position remains the same only the magnitude changes right so now this force is removed from here it is shared by plane 1 and plane 2 we can share it for like three planes or any number of planes now if this force is f2 is there we can again distribute this f2 in plane 1 and plane 2 a part goes to plane 1 and a part goes to plane 2 so f2a and f2b similarly for force f3 so now these forces they are taken by these two planes and now these forces they do not exist on on this axis of rotation rather they exist on these two planes right the, in distributed redistributed manner and we say that the distance between these two planes is l now if we draw these three forces for plane 1 so this is f1a f2a and f3a in this way and if you point the resultant of all these three forces we know by with the help of using the vector diagram we can find the resultant of these three forces right uh, we have already done it in static balancing so and we also know the condition for the balancing of three forces right so we can find the resultant of f1a and f2a something like this and then you can find the resultant for f2a and f3a so whatever we get whatever i've just assumed that let's say this is the resultant that i get for all these three forces similarly we can do it for plane 2 you can find the resultant of first any two forces and then the resultant of the remaining two forces and let's assume that this is the force that we are getting for plane 2 now to balance these forces what we have to do we have to place two counter masses at this point right f1 and another counter mass at f2 in such a way that this force balances the force produced because of the resultant of the forces on plane 1 and this force f2 it balances the forces produced because of the resultant of forces on plane 2 and also these two forces the combination of these three forces they nullify the unbalanced couple produced in the system therefore we can balance a system or we can balance a rotor with n number of unbalanced masses in different planes by adding two counter masses in two different planes